Argonauts as well. Oh. Um, wow. And and then I, I pursued uh, marine science and archaeology in college, and then uh, was lucky enough that Ballard was starting his grad program mm -hmm. uh, at the University of Rhode Island the year that I graduated college. So uh, he asked me to apply. Wow. That's how I got into it. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of kind of like just like right time, right place, like just those connections that yeah. kind of opened it up for you. I was you. also really good at being persistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Which important. Which sometimes makes a big yeah. difference. Yeah. Good quality. Mm, yeah. Nice, I'm glad you mentioned that. Cool. Sebastian, what about you? You've got all of this knowledge that you share with us all the time, and I know a lot of our viewers are wondering, like, how do you know all this stuff? Where'd you learn it? That is a good question. <laughs> um, I made a correct um, career choice when I was seven and said I wanted oh. to be a marine biologist, <laughs> inspired by the Pokemon Star Me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I end up kind of like, having a huge interest in early childhood in marine science and particularly marine biology. Mm -hmm. um, read a lot of books. I read a book about the coelacanth when I was about in the sixth grade, the whole paper on it. Um, for those who don't know, coelacanth is a species of deep sea fish that were thought to be dead for millions of years, but then were rediscovered off the coast of Africa. Um, but yeah, I. I was just more of a hobbyist at that point. I didn't think I was really smart enough to go into marine science. Um, but when I got into high school, I started volunteering at the Seattle Aquarium as a youth. Um, they call them advocates now, but back there they were just volunteers. Um, and I ended up winning Volunteer of the Year from the first year of being there. Um, it turned out I was very good, particularly in tropical um, coral sciences. Um, so. I intended to go to come to here to Hawaii to study coral aquaculture. Um, but in between my summer, in between graduating and going to the first year of college, I was lucky enough to join the Nautilus on an expedition to the Mid Cayman Rise as a honors research program student, which kind of is like a bit of a smorgasbord of activities here on Nautilus. <laughs> So I got to do a little bit of data logging, a little bit of seafloor mapping, a little bit of communications. That's so cool. So I got a little taste for everything about ocean exploration and everything that knowledge is about. Um, and in that progress, they kind of converted me to a deep sea interest. A quick zoom. Can you zoom here? Yeah, look. Yep. Yeah, let's get a zoom, please. Uh, I can be zoom in a bit. Set. Ooh, that's a beautiful color. Oh, that's that's that. a gorgeous color. I think this is the second purple one I've, oh, really? I've seen. Yeah, today. I saw the picture of the one that they saw um, the other day. We saw one this morning. Really? Yeah. We did. Huh. It was well, one that was next that. to a, the brain looking one that I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I forget that I was doing those ship issues. Yeah, maybe you were in the in the studio. I That's feel right. like I always miss all there the good stuff. Yeah. Ton of these. You need to never leave. All right, <laughs> coming out. Well, there were a ton of these near the summit of King George on Alaska. Oh, so that might yeah. be a good indication that we're getting higher in elevation on the okay. seamount. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, I just finished my time at the Nautilus. I originally went to another university on the island for a little bit. Unfortunately, they didn't have the facilities for me to pursue deep sea as an interest. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to get oh, interested no. in mapping and that kind of stuff, and they didn't have that either. So it took a couple of years to get my scholarship to let me transfer, but eventually I got to transfer to UH Manoa, mm -hmm. and I've been working in their deep sea fish lab since for the majority of it. So, yeah, it's kind of how I've, my path nice. up until now. Yeah. Such inspiring stories everybody has. Yeah. And I. Before we move on to the front row, because yeah. I really want to hear um, and have y'all share, because y'all have amazing stories. Uh, someone left a comment and a question and shared that their wife is pursuing her uh, her career in ecology. And this viewer is a mechanic, electrician, and controls technician. technician and they wanted to know if there were any research vessels that they could both serve on. And I feel like... Um, that would be, we do have a internship program. Yeah. Um, I know um, Hannah joined just by, I think you really just asked, didn't you? Wait, what? How you got here. Oh, how I got here? Yes. Well, actually I got here because my work is on the Nautilus samples taken from the Voyager Seamounts. And, well, my advisor was on that ship that collected the 
the samples. So when Spun. my, uh, mm. unfortunately our cruise that was supposed to happen in February mm -hmm. fell through, but she was saying that it would be an awesome opportunity if I try for the Nautilus. And so then I reached out to Dr. Daniel and he was like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll definitely welcome you on board. And I was like, Spun. oh my gosh, that's great. And then I literally found out probably in August that Dr. Val was also going to be on the cruise <laughs> with me. And I was even more excited because I get to learn alongside her and she knows so much and she's so smart. Yeah. I just love hearing her go on and on about rock. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. And for those even of you that go on and on. <laughs> For those of you that are listening, wondering like how you can get on the ship, um, I'm participating in an at sea program as a science communication fellow, but we also have internships available. We've got ROV internships, um, science internships, and, mapping. And video engineering internships. And video engineering, yes. Mm -hmm. So like there are so many roles. And I am one of those ocean science interns as well. Yeah. Um, it's very, very like, interesting positions, a variety of options. We definitely encourage you to apply. Yes, yeah, so you can go to, I think it's oceanexploration.org. Uh, I think it's all under the Nautilus or it's Live. All, it's all on Nautilus Nautilus Live. Nautilus Live. Nautilus Live. Nautilus Live. now. It's usually um, the fourth quarter we open the uh, Okay, so it's, oh yeah, it's under the education tab mm -hmm. and you can uh, you can explore the different opera, um, options there. Um, I'm pretty sure the at sea programs um, will probably open up again like mid to late fall because mm -hmm. obviously they're closed for, for this field season. So uh, yeah, anybody who's interested should check out those. And um, yeah. Um, I know there are other programs as well, if you look into them. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk about them. Um, Go for it, people wanna uh, know. Okay, so there is the, also the Okeanos Explorer and Training Program. Mm -hmm. They are more mapping specialized. They'll put you on the Okeanos for a summer. Um, oh, what's what that is guy? that thing? Looks like a tadpole. Yeah, it oh, does. Look at her. Like a baby oh, wow. rat tail? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, but it's swimming really weird. Oh, here we go. Can we zoom? It does look like a baby rat tail. Look when you are. Wait. Hi there. Is that a gulper? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Maybe an eel? Gulper eel? It has uh, a fat head yeah. to it. That's it does kind of look like a gopher eel, right? That big old head. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you get a zoom, you try. Yeah. <laughs> it has yep. top fins. Ooh, nah. It doesn't bite. Can we see it on the... the there you it's, go. It's attacking us. Oh. <laughs> Fine. Oh. Uh, closer up, it looked a little bit more like a rat tail to me. Maybe a younger. Oh, there oh. he is. They're back. And a shrimp. There they Hello. are. Hello. Oh, it's cute. <laughs> uh, I'm re I think it's a rat tail of some kind, for sure. Nah, definitely a species I'm not It does seem with. like a like a juvenile rat tail. Okay, I took a highlight. Great. Yeah. Want to try to go for a zoom in? Quick? Yeah, sure. sure. Let's give it a try and uh, see what it does. Ah, oh, it's so cute. I love him. That's so cool. Or her. <laughs> there you go. Or they. <laughs> it. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is nice. Just waiting for the close-up. It close looks like up. it could be a, um, what is it? In Harry Potter. The oh, the golden snitch. snitch? Yeah. I was going to say he looks a little bit like Voldemort in the face. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> it's like a pug. He's cute but ugly. Coming towards us. That's a great us. zoom. That is a great wow. zoom. Wow. Oh, well, I'm not okay. zooming. It's Dear swimming right. They are it's like it's like in the camera. They know right they're right the attention. Yeah. And then, it's, what is that? All right, here we go. A oh. oh, it's another one. Oh, no, it's the same one. It's just swimming away it's again. It's fast. All right, bye, buddy. Go find your dad. Find your dad. That was yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I was thinking that. Coming up. <laughs> go find your dad. It must be Nemo. <laughs> Sea star. Nice. Um, anyone on the front row able to share a little bit about your journey, how you got here, oh, what you started gosh. being interested in? Y'all have got some really great stories up there. There's not enough time left in the watch. 
Although to uh, oh, uh, follow so. up on a theme, I, I got interested in uh, film and film production when I was eight and followed that passion as well. So a lot of people inspired at a young age on yeah. this watch. Were you always interested in the ocean? Uh, no, I've, I've always enjoyed water. I've never lived more than an hour away from the ocean, There's except for film school. Uh, but uh, no, I just by happenstance uh, was tasked to a mission in 2010 and then just kind of got busier from there. Went out yeah. on two vessels the next year, oh, no, no. four vessels after that. Actually uh, sailed with Tito on my first time out in 2010. I remember that very well. Oh, that's sweet. And hey, Tito here. Uh, let's see, I went in the Navy at 17 after dropping out of high school, got out of 20, and just uh, happened to be the uh, mess more. attendant on the Titanic discovery. Mm. And that's what really piqued my interest in underwater yeah. robots and such. And uh, worked in all facets of uh, shipboard work, including cook, able-bodied seaman, bosun, and then went down the engine room for a few years. But when I gave that up, I immediately kind of transferred over to a tech and started working with the ROVs at Woods Hole. Nice. Were you a QMED? Yeah. Look, do you still maintain your MMC? I do not. Oh. Not since 1999. I've actually got an MMC as well. Oh. Uh, so do I. Merchant Marine credential. Merchant Marine. Yeah, we needed them to work offshore on a couple of vessels. Are you an OS? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've never actually used it for anything. That's probably a yes. What do you use that for? Like, what does that allow you to do? It's literally a document that allows you to work on ships. It's provided by the Coast Guard. Oh. You have to renew it every five years. Well, the new rule is you need 180 uh, certified C days to renew, which for us is not difficult, but remembering to get the letter <laughs> is the big challenge. Hmm, interesting. Thank you all for sharing that, Ed and Tito. That was great. Jake or Derek, are you all able to oh, share yeah, a little sure. bit? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah, I got my degree in ocean engineering at University of Rhode Island. And then my mom insisted that I apply to this internship. She sent me this link, and it was the Nautilus Live internship. <laughs> nice. And uh, I ended up getting it, to my surprise, after my senior year, and completely shifted gears from whatever I was studying back then to this. I was whatever like, I need to do right this. Now. So um, I came out for the internship and then was a little persistent, showed up to a few conferences that I knew people would be at, got back on the ship, and then kept coming out. There you go. Yep. Nice. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> our moms are our best cheerleaders. And if I can, real quick, just speak to those internships yeah. uh, here and any place else, I always encourage uh, uh, young professionals, aspiring uh, young professionals, to apply to everything that has the slightest yeah. interest uh, don't ever think that you're not what somebody's looking for. Make them say no. Mm. Apply. Uh, and the vast majority of my uh, video engineering interns never thought they had a shot at being accepted. Yeah. You don't know what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So apply and you might get it. Yeah. I didn't apply the first time my mom sent it. I didn't think I was good enough. <laughs> yeah. The second time she sent it, it was like a week before the deadline. And yeah. I was like, uh, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, make them say no. Don't do yep. it yourself. I kind of felt the same way about the science communication fellow application. I found out about it like a month before. And I was like super nervous, honestly, to go ask like my administrators and ask like, can I like leave school and go like work on this ship for a little bit? And I have the most supportive school. Um, and I was honestly so much like self-doubt kind of telling myself that I was not, you know, like qualified because for so many different reasons and I kind of had people encouraging me to still go for it and apply and I did and I got it and it's just so exciting and just so grateful to yeah. be here. So for people, I see we have some viewers um, asking about being a science communication fellow, definitely apply. When the application opens back up, they'll be posting about it everywhere on social media. And that's, they're looking for both formal and informal yeah. educators and advocates. 
Yes. What about you, Derek? Uh, let's see. I wasn't always, well, I was always fascinated by the ocean, but I lived about two hours away. I grew up in New Hampshire, um, kind of out in the countryside a bit. So it's like spent a lot of time in the outdoors, just kind of like a nature boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so I knew I liked the environment. I like studying nature and being outside. So I, I applied for environmental science at University of New Hampshire. I went there, got a Bachelor of Science. And um, after finishing that, I went to AmeriCorps for two years doing like um, outdoor work, like trail maintenance up in the, oh. the White Mountains uh, yeah, up in Hampshire. And quick, quick zoom here. Gone in. Oh, oh wow. Oh, 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 wow. What is that? What is that? He has his mouth open. Yeah. Looks full. Yeah, he definitely had a bite. Yeah, he just ate some. <laughs> yeah. He definitely had a bite. Are they? pregnant or is that just nope, that's right, yeah, so forward. many deep sea animals have expandable stomachs each uh. prey larger than they're used to because they may not find prey for long periods of time interesting well, that's a bright shrimp a good strategy yeah steep in here uh, nice. uh, let's see yeah then um mm -hmm. so americorps took me out to the state of washington i did a year out there like near the columbia gorge doing environmental restoration work like on streams cool um, like in the gorge yeah some of the ranch lands uh that contribute to the gorge uh basically helping to keep like livestock out of streams and let the vegetation grow back right and uh remove invasive species and um stop erosion things like that wow um and then i was I figured like all the jobs I really wanted to do were you kind of needed a master's and mm -hmm. so um, I went to Oregon State got a master's in marine resource management and from there went and lived on the Oregon coast for about six years uh, three years on the north coast working for the national estuary program EPA has partnerships with states to protect some of America's like best bays and estuaries so a lot of monitoring conservation work um, restoring like coastal habitats um, and then moved down to the south coast for a while, to a beautiful part of the state. Um, and then, yeah, I started a family and we moved back to New England for, for my side of the family. And um, mm -hmm. I kind of, like Malia, I sort of had like midway in my career, I, I wanted a shift of emphasis more into the marine environment more. So um, I started go. taking classes at University of New Hampshire and mapping, ocean mapping. Um, might we get a zoom on this? Noah yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Go ahead, Ed. Go on in. Uh, Megan Cook is also an OSU alum. All right, that is a crinoid. Nice. The big crinoid. Long. That's huge. Uh, yeah. yeah. Chester tells a great story about how she ended up playing on their polo team. What? Oh. That's cool. Everybody's got a crazy part of their <laughs> interest that you got to talk to your shipmates to find out about. Wait, is that a whole terrain right there? The water column? No, there's a, there's shrimp, a shrimp that just went by. It had a different shape. I think this shrimp. looks like... Alright, it's okay, it's fine. We can look at the sponge. It's a sponge with uh, a I think. Glass sponge? It's either a sponge noid or a cry sponge. Yeah. It's a crying sponge. It's SpongeBob? No. <laughs> and then maybe you chat to see what that little white thing All on right. the left is. Go for zoom there. Go on in. White thing on the left as well. I... It actually could look like a flower with the stem and then. Yeah. The There's shrimp in there. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's a big shrimp in there. Can they not get out at all? I don't Do think they so. Want to get out, I suppose. Some species get in there as zooplankton and live their entire lives inside of it, depending on the species. That's crazy. Um, and, and the species just, sponge. They just love vibing in there? Yep. Wow. They just pick up any Still extra societies so the sponge doesn't get. Then once I uh, probably go pretty good existence. It, we can look like, at the you thing have all on the, the left. Well, you're safe. You're, yeah, you're yeah. protected. Boing. Yeah. And let's uh, oh. can over to the left. <laughs> 
Ah, See that white like thing that. on the left? That's cool. Oh, you want to look at that too? Yeah, you just want a quick peek at that, I think. Ooh. That's a coral, I think, right? Uh, That's yeah. a sponge. That's a sponge? What? Let me double check. Can we get a closer look on the pores as close as you can? Holy smokes. It looks sparkly, glittery. Oh, uh, yeah, Asako says it is a sponge. Huh. A Walteria sponge. Walteria. It's not on our collection list, but it's very pretty. Yeah. So whenever you guys are ready to move on. So the Hawaiian word for sponge is huakai. 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 Nice. Thank you. You notice all the kai that you'll hear in there, like mauna kai. So kai referring to the ocean. How do you spell hua kai? H U Okina. There's another one. A K A I. Shrimp. These red suggested shrimps are curious. They're all appearing right now. And they're Fish. also appearing in conjunction with oh, oh, shark. Oh, there it is. Shark. Yay. Nice. That was so there you fast. Go. That was a fast circle, too. Yeah. I, you know I'm right here. I'm, right, I'm so close. There's an eel back in there, too. Oh, yeah, right there. Where did that shark go? Yeah. He's probably long gone by now, isn't he? Probably. Got a couple screenshots. And mm. Where was I saying? I was talking about these red shrimp. Mm. Uh, they're going in currents of a lot of pelagic animals right now, particularly those little black tadpole guys you saw, which I figured out are custiels. I'm not sure if they're juveniles or not. What's this guy doing? Oh. Sebastian, did you get a capture of the shark or is it too fast? I got a couple. They may be blurry. Okay, cool. That was a quick draw if you got those shots. Yeah. I'm always on the mouth. <laughs> Nice. Derek, you were talking about AmeriCorps. So I was like looking online to kind of see what opportunities they have for people. And I see like it's open for anyone older than 17. They've got volunteer programs, senior volunteer programs. Um, sounds really cool. I hadn't heard about it before. Yeah, it's kind of like the, um, if, you, if you want to do something like Peace Corps, but you want to kind of stay in country mm -hmm. and do something um, in the US, it's a good, good option. Oh, mm -hmm. and they have stuff that's everything from like teaching kids in um, urban areas to like you know to, stuff to like left. I did mm -hmm. shark. outside. What was that? Doing Might have been concert. some black fish left. I think there's another shark over there. To the left? To the left. Yeah, it's gone. It's sure. probably behind us. Okay. They're moving fast. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, I mean it's a volunteer program, but yeah. you get like living expenses, and then you can get. Uh, um, help paying loans for education. You we just rolled past yeah. the 1200 meter mark. Were we looking for a rock sample at that yes, point? Yes, we are looking for a rock sample around here. Yep, so Hannah, rocks. that's your call. Looks like we got a lot to choose from. Yeah, I don't know about that. These look um, pretty... Also, can we get a look at that little funny. sponge <laughs> on the left as well? We get a chance. Yeah, that one right there. Do you want to get your rock before you're relieved for dinner so they don't just do it for you? Mm -hmm. It yeah, does pop. Kind of time. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Very pretty. Pretty. Um, let's see. I do not... Look. Go for a zoom, Wait. in. Go on in. Is that one good? No. It's very close yeah. to what I'm talking so it's not it, but it's very pretty. And they still camera shot of that as well. Yeah. Oh, that's not it. I'm highlight not. This. I think there might be two shrimps in there yeah. with the colors. Oops, there it is. It's called the Ferber cam. Yeah, yeah. Ferber cam, still cam. Either one goes. Comes out of Andrew Thurber's lab. Coming yep. out. Hi, uh, this is Upashana from the lounge. Uh, I think the sponge that we are currently looking at is on the list of our uh, priority samples. Um, I was looking at the list. The, our list priority ones is bright purple. Uh, no, there was a white right. ferret sponge. Ferret sponge? Yeah, I think so. Guys, the can we hang out one? here for a sec? Is that, is that doable? Uh, we'd have to stop the ship. 
Uh, can we do that? Do you have to go back? Oh, the um, if we stop I'm right now, we Faraday probably do that. Faraday looks very ribbon-like. That is the one, the Faraday. Yeah, but we can, like, you guys decide and you can. can um, yeah, well, we, we, it's near the end of the dive anyways. If we collect it, we can just go ahead and collect it. It doesn't really matter. We can put okay, so this and what. Okay, um, so I've, I've had them stop the ships, so we should probably do the rock sample as well. Yes. Okay. What, so why don't you decide whether we're going to take this or not, too? Um, I think we'll just go ahead and take it. Okay, yeah, because right. Ipsana says it's one we need, right? She thinks so. Um, we can debate in the lab and stop, but it's good to be, better to be safe than sorry. Um, I think this Are you sure you're not confused with the like Corbatella? Honestly, maybe try and cut below in between the two oranges. You might be able to squeeze the shrimp out of that. Cut where? Below the... So you can see those two oranges? Yeah. Maybe take up the top half and try to separate so it's trapped okay. in there. Is this a, where is this going to go in the... Is that okay with you, Mike? Yeah, have we decided that we need, that we're going to sample yeah, it? Yeah, we're going to sample it. Okay, so yes. It's going to go in Epsilon. Come a little wide, Ed? Yeah, coming out. Oh, you got the manip out already. Thor is still debating. Do you not want the uh, How do you want to sample this? the specimen science? Um, we have pictures. What? Sorry, what's the question? I was oh. just wondering if you want a larger sample for the morphology, the overall structure. Um, if we cut between the two shrimps, we should have enough. Yeah, and where's this, this going? End up being slurped. Um, I don't know. What? Where is this going to end up? Science? What's our What's um, our thought here? Um, probably epsilon. Epsilon. Okay, one of the boxes. All right. I was just joking. I made oh, you that can, up. You can zoom back in. <laughs> oh, what's on the? Oh, that's messy. Never mind. Oh, that's a little Hopefully too far. Sorry, I'll stay with the wrist. That's all right. Sebastian, we know where to put it. Um, we're putting it uh, omega. Oh. 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 Oh, we, we tapped the whole. Okay, all take the whole thing. Just take the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Full wide. So that it's going to go in the front bio box, forward bio box. Uh, it's falling. It's pretty floaty. Wrist rotate maybe. All right, I'm full wide. You probably want to rack me back and box out. Yep. Okay, racking back. <clears throat> Can you push out the tool tray? Tool tray is coming out. Yeah. Do y'all see the shrimp moving at all? There's two in there, I can see them. Yeah. Because I don't see that they're moving. They might be trapped in there. Can you see it? Can you do a push if you want? Oh no. Get a zoom, a push there? Okay. Yep. Yeah, they're in there. <laughs> oh, peeking right. through the windows. Wide. I'm really fascinated by these shrimp that live in these sponges. Like, do they grow up there their whole life? Or do they just find their way in? Um, so of these shrimps, it depends on the species. Most of them, if it's, they end up just going in there as zooplankton mm -hmm. and end up living their entire lives Sample in there. Sample collected. Watch yeah. change of video. That's the right angle, right? That's the right, right angle. So guys, we're looking at a rock sample here too. Okay. Right. That's the manipulator arm. Oh, I know, I know, but it's no, I'm behind. I'm teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's in. Um, this guy here. This one. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be sample <laughs> zero, three, four for the sponge. <laughs> There's a shrimp living inside the rock. What if the shrimp is going back to his friends? Yeah, he's like, I'm going to save you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not like the, the other shrimp earlier that went right next to its friend, and then yeah. the friend got slurped. All right, where's this going to go? 
Um, let's that throw that. That can go in the side box, right? Yeah, can go in the starboard. Starboard E, please. Starboard E. Before you put it in, do you mind rotating it? Yeah, sure. Thank you. What's the color underneath? Yeah, giving it a rotate. Thank you. Go ahead, Bridge. Huh. Yeah, it looks cool. great. Awesome. You know, it would be smart to put like a scale bar on the claw so that we could measure stuff that we oh. have in our claw. That would be smart. That way we don't have to line oh, it up with like the laser. A yeah, that way we don't have to line it up with the lasers to get a shot on it. Um, want to pu push out the uh, sample tray? Yeah. I don't know which one we're going into. Uh, we're going said, into uh, e. Um, starboard E. E is an echo. Oh my gosh, I saw the arm in one of the um, the small black and white cameras. I thought it was a shark. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, we're under attack. At first glance, I could totally see that. Can you write the description? I didn't see it at all. <laughs> I'm seeing another one of those sponges in the distance. Um, so yeah, we don't need this, that one since we got this one. Yeah. Also, for our viewers, if you're hearing some new voices, that's because we're doing some dinner changes yeah. so everyone can eat. Yeah, I would just want to take a, a minute to shout out one yeah, of my Yeah, shift stopped. Oh, i got to catch up. But shout out one of my undergrads that is watching right now. Her name's Candace, and she helped me with all the Nautilus samples that we had from Nautilus Expedition 134 and she helped me saw, polish, basically everything. I got a rack cool. out egg. Uh, oh, that's not and it. And she's <laughs> super cool. We're ready to resume. Video change. Hi, Candace. What was that? Ready to move again? Uh, let me catch back up. We just, back in front. We just got another rock for you. Yeah. She's into actually planetary science. She had a oh, cool. internship with NASA. Want to come up on the winch, Jake? Yeah, well, the Earth is a planet too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Roger. I know. I was like, the ocean is just as unknown as space. <laughs> but yeah, she's super cool. She's also <laughs> a Swifty. Love her. I don't know what that means. She Taylor loves Taylor Swift. Swift. <laughs> oh, that's why I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right. Go and eat. Look at all this low bait flow. Low bait flow. How do you spell low bait? L? L? Okay. Sorry, L-O-B-A-T-E. Yeah, I just want to get the ship oh, moving exactly. and then we can switch. <laughs> all right. She, she laughed at what you said. Why? <laughs> Everybody ready to move oh, again? Yeah. That is funny. No. Okay, some corals. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> What's that emoji? The brown one. Let me see. What is it? No, you need to you need to emoji here with the Earth emoji. Mm. Yeah. yeah, here I'm gonna do it. Ooh, there's another purple one on the left. Oh yeah, I don't. There it is. That one. Uh, I erased the heart. Oh well. <laughs> it's better anyway. Are we wanting zooms on any of this or we move on? 
I hear nothing. Moving on. <laughs> What's that? Can I? I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. That's me. One second. Yeah, I see it. Thank you. Oh, sorry. No. Ship is not moving. No. We are stationary. Are they, uh, probably good for 2 5. 2 5? Sure. Derek mentioned that. Um, Red. Pretty purple thing. Mm -hmm. Hey, Her Nav, this is Data. Uh, can I talk to you on off, off of SPL really quick? Yes. Uh, you're all right. You're 23 meters up. Wait, wait, wait for the ship. You come up now, you'll pull me. For Renjo. Ooh, what's that? Lobster? We Lobster? saw those at the our last um, the last watch. Yeah. Can you get a zoom on that? Sure. They're so flat. I yeah. forget the name because I'm not Go a ahead, video biologist, but yeah, they're really cute. Flying lobster. <laughs> Flying lobster. Wow, never seen that. I'm gonna highlight this. I like it. Instead of red lobster, it's pink lobster. Mm -hmm. So in Hawaiian, it's a ula. 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 Right. Ula. We have 15 meters left. Right. For what? Uh, the ship's movement. Okay. Virginia says a polychelidae. And there's a little brittle star next to it. So I see it now. <gasps> okay, go on. Oh, a little shrimp.
Push in on the sponge if you want. Good things. Roger. Five meters heard. Yep. Does that look like one of the ones they wanted to sample, Taylor? Or no. I think they just they just sampled one before you came in. Oh, they did. Yep. Oh, they got it. It was. It wasn't. It didn't look like this though. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't this type, but we did, did just sample a sponge. Yeah, I was in the lounge with Upasha when she was saying we want that as a sample, so I told oh. her to call in. Okay, you can go in. Thanks. Three meters left. Are we going to be taking any more rock samples on this dive, Hannah? If we have space, oh. I mean, might as well. Another cute little sea star. Because again, we haven't sampled from this side mm -hmm. of the seamount. So, oh, look at the starfish. I know. Starfish under a little umbrella. Sea star. I'm the starfish, or sea star. Sorry, star. sea star, I should say. <laughs> I'm the sea star MC on our watch. <laughs> it's gonna come up like three. Yep, yep. Yeah. you're gonna come up. And this, the ship is stationary, by the way. Awesome, thank Whoa. you. Good for another 25. Roger. Uh, this is just a reminder from the data logger when we're sampling, um, if we could go a little slow because we are logging samples in a paper log and a digital log and taking photos um, and we want to make sure that we're getting everything logged uh, accordingly and with timestamps. Um, so maybe if we're doing a, a multiple collection with um, two or three samples in the same area, just take a pause and check in with the data logger and make sure that they're ready to continue. Um, Roger. Yeah. Right click faster. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done that. I've sat back there before and it's like, hold on, hold on, I come on. It's interesting to see how the different watches operate, you know? We all have our grown group. Sometimes we rush it because uh, the ship's moving. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, the dead logger stressed out and the nav is trying to take waypoints and then I'm saying, you know, we're moving, we're moving, yeah. ship's moving. Don't want to run yeah. into a wall. Another purple, right? Where am I? Where do you see the purple at? I think oh, I see it. One. Yeah. Like good to come up. Baby Victor Gordon. Is it the Victor? Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Named after the French smooth. human yeah. yeah. Is that from the current? Oh, okay. I asked huh. Val about it because some of the rocks when Oh, when we were by that beautiful black coral, the big yeah. one, that the rock that it was on around that. it was like glistening and smooth. Oh, yeah. And I asked her, what does that mean? And she said, it could be from the, cur from the take current smoothing it. I, pull, good. I pulled uh, Atlanta's head around when I spun there. You gave me the Yankee. You gave me the Yankee. I've been showing that black coral highlight during ship in my house. with all the squat lobsters. Yeah. It's a good one. I'm gonna come up a little bit. Mm. You're all right. 
I'm right. All right. Yeah, and altitude is what I look at. Yeah. So I'm wearing space way out. He could come up a bit. It's compensating for that little incline you're on right there. Well, yeah, so we're is that a lot? horizontal is distances, is you know, That's same fine. as if you were above know. me. Mm. So it is kind of brown, I, I was, yeah, 15, 20 meters away. But it looks kind of dead. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's a little upright, but maybe it's close. on its way out. Yeah. All right. You have 10 meters left. And uh, push in there a bit. But there is a starfish by Yeah, fire. I saw that. That's good, thanks. Send some smooth operator. Oh, it's closing around. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the megaphone. I know it's not, but it does. Yeah. It does remind we haven't me. seen any of those this time. Yeah, huh? I was no. going to say, I forgot about them. Yeah. We were yeah. seeing a lot of them. I miss them. They were deeper on the last yeah. seamount, but they, mm. I didn't see any of this seamount. I think I called that a cornucopia. You guys say a megaphone? Yeah. Yeah. I saw it in the science chat, so I think we just <laughs> went from there. I mean, I'm not a biologist, so I just say what I think it looks like. Me too. It was just crazy how big they were. And then we saw some double megaphones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to describe animals as any. <laughs> <laughs> just like I thought that one thing was like a cockroach. Obviously wasn't. <laughs> what was it? Uh, I forget. It's a chitin. Chitin. Yeah. So it's a type of mollusk. We have uh, two and a half meters left. Cool. Right. Two and a half. So that makes sense why she would think if it was a cockroach if it was a mollusk. That seems... It's a tiny sea star. It's just a baby. baby sea star. Contact. We've got a good geology question, Hannah. Someone's okay. asking about the odds of coming across yeah. any hydrothermal vents, which, from my understanding, is another two five. zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, we're. Um, I like, like to say non-zero, but very uh, infinitesimally. I don't think it's non. I don't think it's non-zero. I think it's pretty zero. So yeah. um, that leads into a discussion of hotspots. So the hotspot, <laughs> and I and H Hannah can fill in after I'm <laughs> after yeah, I give no. a quick definition. Um, a hotspot is uh, uh, well, okay. It's it's currently the hot the, the hotspot that created these seamounts is uh, where the, the big island of Hawaii is right now, mm -hmm. and so it, the the Pacific plate has moved over millennia, over millions of years. So there's no volcanic or heat activity here anymore, uh, which would have caused underwater volcanoes, possibly hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are mostly on mid-ocean ridges, though, and mm -hmm. that's very far from here because we're in the middle of a plate so but if we were to go to Baja California or Galapagos or the um, you know those parts of, of the Pacific where there's mm -hmm. two plates that meet um, and they're spreading apart in, in the in the ocean that's where most of the hydrothermal vents are but there could be some hydrothermal activity at a, at a hot spot site so that would be where there is a non-zero chance but here where it's been uh, the, the hot spot has moved on and mm -hmm. it's a uh, extinct uh, volcano, there's really no heat that could that could cause that. It's never zero though that it can never be zero. Erupt. I like I like how you never all say a non-zero chance. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna adopt that terminology. Mm. So that's all right. kind of right. But <laughs> this hotspot is actually different from the Hawaiian hotspot is based really? off of the isotopic chemistry that mm -hmm. we're looking at. So we are trying to prove that actually. Mm -hmm. But that's what my current research is and that's why it's oh. so important to collect these these rocks so we can determine what heat, heat spot geez, what hot spot <laughs> it came from. But um, speaking of the Galapagos, that's called intraplate volcanism. Yeah. So that's like where the plate tectonics move. And uh -huh. so any of those like little gaps, 
the magma will rise up and fill in those cracks. So there's a lot of research that is left. done on the Galapagos because right, that I'm I can't recall if it's currently happening. I, I can't I don't want to say, but there are hot spots in the lower Pacific, and there's also a mid ocean ridge yeah. over mm -hmm. where you were describing. The, the Juan de Fuca. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Juan de Fuca, East Pacific Rise, that sort of stuff. Yes. So that was correct, too. Has but anyone in here seen hydrothermal vents on a dive before? I would love to see no, some. No, but I've Dan, done a study. Dan saw some. Uh, <laughs> we talked about it in our last watch. Oh, really? Nice. I got to go, but thank you for the geology question. Thank, thank you, Hannah. Hannah. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah, with that hot spot there, living on Big Island, we get earthquakes quite, mm -hmm. quite often. Mm. Ten meters left. Bird. That's similar to the sponge, yeah, we just collected. I oh. think so. I'm not an expert, but it looks like it. <laughs> it looks like it. Do a quick zoom there, Jane, yeah. and see who's home. All spotty in the background there. <laughs> Jacob, what are the magnitude of those earthquakes typically? Um, typically, like every, a lot of them under four. Um, okay. Uh, but yeah, I get County of Hawaii text messages all the time, and yeah, there's a bunch. We like, or uh, even if on the on the USGS website, if you go mm -hmm. on, I bet you, right now, if you go on there, you can look up uh, the Big Island, and there probably was probably one today. Five meters left. Uh, we get some meters. pretty big ones on the Big Island. Seven. Um, I remember in 2018 when the volcano decided to start um, exploding that? in neighborhoods. We were having like 300 earthquakes, something like Whoa. an hour or something like that, and like yeah. up to Did you seven, say 100? Yeah, like up it's to a an hour. It's a little different at dinner oh hand It yeah. was crazy. The whole room's not swapping. I don't know if we could only do shift handovers or watch handovers like we do dinner handovers. <laughs> it's always been that way on here. Where I come from, I would be severely berated for spending more than two minutes doing a handover. Five, at, you know, talk more than three minutes, you're lying or bragging. Or just shooting the breeze, but yeah. Let's something to look at. There's something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Something. It looks a lot denser than the other corals. Uh, why not? Go ahead, Dana. Maybe it's just the angle. Yeah, it's one of uh, those chrysogorgids again, with opioid at the base. Here's OK, if you go ahead. Thank you for the joyride. Much appreciated. I'm out. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Bye, Dan. Dan. Bye, Dan. Bye. Are we going to start recovering vehicles at 8, or are we trying to be on deck? We're going to probably eight? start like 7.15, 7.30 to be on deck by 8. Mm -hmm. uh, the ship's holding position, Jake. Nice. All right, I'm headed out to dinner. Be back soon. Okay.
ship's holding position. And uh, That's we're just fine. still coming up the seamount. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know. Do you want me to call in a movement or just kind of hang out for a couple minutes? Uh, I guess we can, we can wait till Derek should be on his way up so we can. So go ahead and call yeah, the Yeah, you, you can call the move. Ready. Roger. Hey, Kara. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be with you guys again. Just filling in with Tor for Tori while she gets dinner. <laughs> yep, we are, in addition to being Dead Man's Watch, we are Dinner Watch as well. <laughs> Did you call it Dead Man's Watch? Yeah. <laughs> the 12 to 4 a.m. is apparently called the Dead Man's Watch. You haven't heard that before? No. <laughs> we all get dinner at 4 a.m. <laughs> nice. And by go get dinner, I mean we go to the mess because we can't obviously go anywhere. Yeah, you go, you go get whatever's left over in the fridge. We are at the finest dining establishment. Yeah. No, Derek, miles. <laughs> Derek is really nice and he gets me breakfast every morning so that I can have it for dinner at 4 a.m. Oh, breakfast dinner. <laughs> so I can't complain. I gladly will cover his dinner shift so you can go get food. And for anyone just tuning in, we are nearing the end of our dive on the Loudoun Seamount. We are moving up the a previously unexplored area on the eastern south on the eastern side, if I'm not mistaken. That's pretty. Oh, I see a little fish. Oh, he ran away. Got scared off. We launched at just about midnight last night, and we're scheduled to be on deck at 8 o'clock. All right, Derek's here, so I'm going to sign off. It was great joining you guys. Yeah. And we see another beautiful yeah. Victor Gorgia, or the two Victor one of them is definitely a Victor Gorgia. I don't know what's happening with the colony yeah. on the left. I love that color. Sponge. That purple is beautiful. Yeah, the purple on the right is definitely a Victor Gorgia with a bunch of ophiroids on it. Uh, the left can be, there can be a Victor Gorgia colony in front of the dead stock of a sponge or a coral. But there are some purple zoanthids as well. Colonial zoanthids. Uh, but it looks like it's another... Can you go for Zoom video? Yep, zoom in. Yeah, that's a lovely colony of Victor Gorgia. And video swapping. Photobomb. Oh, yeah. And the Mantecar sign is shrimp. <laughs> <clears throat> Videos on comms. We're um, tracking a line, um, same, same yeah. bearing. Ship is moving, so 
Yep. Do we want to start moving? Yep. All right, Adam, can you come wide? Coming out. Thanks. Here you go. And we still continue to see the Eridogorgias and the Hemichoraliums. There hasn't been much change in the community composition so far. Uh, the Victor Gorgias are not as uh, regularly observed as the others so far, but we have seen a couple of there's something dark brownish more to the red, more to the right. The right. Yeah, I can a little bit below the current frame if you move. Oh, I see. Yeah, oh, I see that. Yeah. So looks like a serianthid from a distance, but we have to have a closer look. There's one on the left as well. Yeah, there's two of those actually. Good for zoom. Yeah, so that would be a cyanthid or a tube anemone. And there was another one on the left, but this is a great. Nice. All right, come on. That looks so. like a Sinapha branched eel. Most probably, or a macro urid. The yellow fan would be another paramarsid. We have been seeing a few of them. Another beautiful Victogorgia with Ophiroids, there was a sea star, probably Moni Asterid. There's at least four, three Eritogorgias and probably one Metallogorgia that we just passed. We are gradually seeing an increase in Eritogorgias. And just answering this question from the chat real quick, um, when do you think the next dive will be? We will be diving again soon. This is far from our last dive. Um, it does depend on things like transit time, so just stay tuned on our website. We try to update you on um, when we're transiting and mapping or when we're uh, preparing the ROVs for launch, so um, don't be sad. <laughs> this is definitely not our last dive. Crinoid, Anthemastus, not sure the white colony what it is on. Hemicorallium, Iridogorgia. Is that a mm -hmm. urchin or a no? Crinoid? Yeah, that looks like a crinoid.
And we have another question from someone interested in material science. Um, if the ROV pilots are able to answer, if you're too busy flying right now, that's okay. We can come back later. But they're wondering if there are special materials selected for the ROV for storage, um, I'm sure for pressure as well. Are there any special materials that you can share that we use on the ROVs? We use we use a lot of stainless uh, stainless steel, um, some aluminum. We use uh, zinc anodes to prevent corrosion, so they're the first things to corrode um, on a on a vehicle. Um, so yeah. those are like they're meant to corrode. Mm. Um, titanium. Titanium. For the uh, pressure vessels, I assume? For the pressure vessels, yeah. Delrin? Delrin, yeah. Because it's neutral in water. Anything oil filled is usually in like Tigon tubing or like plastic uh, rubber tubing or. Um, Super thin ether. Mm -hmm. yeah. The foam. You gotta zoom here, Ed? Yep, coming in. Very cool, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so that looks like another hemichorallium colony, and there's a uretid sponge next to it with a bunch of ophuroids. Uh, I see a ophuroid arm around the coral as well, but we can continue. Okay. Thank Coming you. Out. Just wanted to be sure that if it's a hemichorallium or a paragorgid. Looks like there's another serianthid at the base of the iridogorgia. Might be a zoom in that sponge on the right. I want to correct myself from earlier, so actually the Galapagos is a hot spot. Oh. I thought that it was intraplate volcanism. Okay. But because there's like the Nazca plate over there and also another plate, so there are multiple like baby plates over there. <laughs> baby so plates? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so cute. But yeah, the Galapagos is, um, it is, cur there's a new part and an old part and as you can probably guess, the new part is currently active. The new part is currently what? Active. Active. So oh. it's happening. Oh. So, yeah, I wanted to clarify. That's exciting. Thanks for but, looking yeah. that up. Well, no, I actually asked Val. Uh, <laughs> yes. Dr. Val knows everything. So. Dr. Isotope knows everything. Yes. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Isotope <laughs> is very, very knowledgeable. <laughs> Midnight shift. Midnight shift, yeah. Name for I love that. Yeah. <laughs> no, she really is Dr. Isotope, though. Like, <laughs> She's incredible, incredible. She's so cool, and she has so, she always has something totally new that I've never heard. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. she's just so knowledgeable, and yeah. And for our viewers who may not be super familiar with geology, could you just briefly explain what is a hot spot? Yeah. So obviously, probably the most common hot spot is the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain. So. As we know, the Big Island is where it is currently active right now. But 
What's so great about these hotspots is that we can track plate tectonics. So how the Earth, we, we know that there are different plates like the North American plate, the Pacific plate, like those are just two examples, but at, usually at these edges of the plate is where you see like volcanism. So you know how y'all have heard of the Ring of Fire? Yes, yes. Yeah, I've heard that. So along the Ring of Fire is also volcanism too. So what's interesting about a hot spot is that it's just occurring in the middle of the Pacific plate. So Whoa, okay, sorry, I was hypnotized <laughs> by this, the sh I like, love when the shrimp, shrimp. dance. It's like they put it on a little show for us. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the hot spot is just in the middle of the plate. And I think the reason why Hawaiian is so, hot spot is so well known is because it's so easily accessible. Okay, yeah. Because, again, I'll, I was actually talking to Dr. Val, and there's about probably only 60 hotspots that we know of like okay. right now but mm -hmm. there are many more oh. but we don't know a lot about them because it's really hard to get get out here and collect this data it's uh -huh. hard you're working with so many different conditions you know sometimes we have like yeah so sometimes um it's really hard to collect this data a lot of things have to happen in order for us to get it but um yeah so hot spot it's melt from the mantle rising up and creating these volcanic i volcanic vol, 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 mm -hmm. volcanoes <laughs> but yeah so we have like this chain of sea mounts so for the hawaiian hot spot on that sea mount we were able to like go back on maui and Oahu and like we get those ages and so when we get the ages we'll look at what the Pacific plate how it moved through time because that hot spot is stationary whereas the plate is moving wow. so there's also because it's called the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain I don't know if you'll ever notice on a globe that in the Hawaiian Seamount chain mm -hmm. there's a like sharp turn going up towards the top of the Pacific plate. Mm -hmm. So that really showed a good change of direction in plate tectonics. And I think if the change was around 50 million years ago, so that's pretty young, younger than the rocks <laughs> that we're looking at. That's pretty young, wow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 50 geology, million years ago. For geology, it's <laughs> young. So um, yeah, because the rocks we're looking at right now are probably between the ages 80 to 100 million years old. Wow. So that's a good way to tell that that's the amazing. Hawaiian is that, that younger. Yeah. So um, it's really, really cool. So we know that the Hawaiian hotspot did not, mo did, definitely did not produce these seamounts. Mm -hmm. So the oldest um, islands in Papahanaumokuakea yeah. um, Kuaihelani and um, Holani Ku Kure Atong are dated about 28 million years old. Yeah. So those are kind of the emergent areas in Papahanaumokuakea versus the seamount areas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you think about time, yeah. you know, right? Time depth. <laughs> I mean, that's a young, when we're talking Cretaceous, yeah? Wow. Yeah. I, you know, I'm going to have to look up. I'm not really from it's, I'm, I need to do better with my geologic time scale, honestly, but because I'm used to stuff being like super old. So the younger samples, like 28 million, I'm like trying to picture what geologic era that is. If anybody's on, I'll probably look it up, honestly, right after I talk. But um, yeah, they're young compared to what we're looking at right now. Like I keep saying, these rocks were formed during the dinosaurs roaming the earth. So the dinosaurs weren't were roaming the earth 28 million years ago. Yeah, yeah. But, but so for Hawaiians, these islands, Papahanaumokuakea, um, is considered our Kupuna Islands. They were the birth, the first that were birthed from the oceanic realm. And so um, Hawaiians have oral narratives and mo'olelo is the word that we use, mo'olelo. 
that um, depicts and recounts uh, these birthing of these islands. And so if you think about the name, Papa Hanau Mokuakea. Oh, my mug doesn't have a top on it, so it'll spill. It uh, refers to Papa Hanau Moku, who is personified by the earth, like an earth mother, and Wakea, who is our sky father. And the union of the two deities have birthed the Hawaiian archipelago, wow, yeah. beginning with Holaniku, the oldest island in the monument. Wow. wow. Thank you, Hannah and Malia, for sharing that. That's really. No, and honestly, it is kind of like, if you think about it, the birthplace for that hotspot that gave birth to the Hawaiian Islands. Mm -hmm. So that's, right. that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, the word for birth is hanau. So you'll see that hanau in the name Papa Hanau. Yeah, as you can say, like Papa Hanau. Yeah. yeah. I used to pronounce it Papa Hana, but then you told us uh, in March at University of Rhode Island. Ooh. It's a hot now, so uh -huh. I got it now. Yep, good. <laughs> good sea star. Is that a leather star? Looks like it. Can I we get it? I think that's on in? the leash list, isn't it? Leather? Some of the varieties of leather star? The big star. Right there. Rock star. And Sebastian, I think for our next watch, we're going to change it up and just have you call out the stuff you don't want us to zoom on. Um, can we zoom in a little bit closer? Yeah, we have to wait till we get the ROV settled. All right, no worries. Zoom. Take your time. Uh, so, Derek, and, and front row guys, I don't know if uh, I talked to Daniel, um, and he said that we should be on deck around 8. So do you think that'll be off bottom, like, 715, 730? Yeah. Hey, Jake, so can we get a zoom a on that star? Uh, 1,000 meters, what? that's 50 minutes. Sea star. Okay, you want to see the sea star? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I we said, should probably you know, start the ideas on a straightening star, up at around seven. Double check. Yeah. Send me what you think. Yeah. yeah so we need to um, prepare to leave bottom around 1900. Okay. Do that spreadsheet over there, Derek. Yep. Is it the same? No. Uh, I have the one. All right. Go for Zoom. Remember the one we used on our former vessel, ROV Math. Oh, maybe I renamed it. I'll okay. Give, I'll get it to you. Okay. So this you. guy, as far as I can tell, matches the description of one of our targets. The matter is that it is rather large. Um, do, let's just, let me double check what spaces we have. Um, do we need to stop the ship? Yeah. I don't um, know. Are we going to sample this? We may have to sample it, if, unless you guys think it's too big. Where does it need to go? Uh, um, it could fit in a box. It could fit in one of the boxes. Well, you put it in aft. Uh, put it in the forward left, forward port. Oh, forward. No, that has the, the bag in it. Well, it's yeah. not going to damage I the bag. I guess it could fit in that. It's not going to eat the bag. In. It'll eat the sponge. If we're going to sample, we have to stop the ship, though. So we have to decide. All uh, right. Um, let's go ahead sample then. OK. All right. Bridge nav. Mm -hmm. All stop, please. Yep. You'll probably have to call in a, Thank you. another back move up. to back them up, too, because we're already about 20 meters. Uh, okay. So maybe 20 meters back. Have them do an e-brake turn and so that's back it up. This far. Uh, yeah, zero, 20, one, 20, zero. Meters, 20 meters back. Bridge nav. Thousand, I'll call it a thousand meters. Uh, we'd like to go 20 meters uh, at a reciprocal heading backwards. Um, so zero one zero. Zero one zero. zero. Yes, thank you. Mm. What do we come up at nowadays? Minus twenty five or something? I uh, I was told twenty a minute. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm starting out. to get tugged right now, so Yeah, and I am only about twelve meters up. Yeah, we're have the call. Can you come wide, Ed? Yep, coming out. Just come up for a second. Oh, yeah. yeah, no worries. Full, full wide. Maybe. Maybe. And so we want to be at 50 meters at uh, 8. Um, I think we want to recover at 8. Yeah. Like oh. on deck. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So for 50 meters at eight, that would have us off bottom at 1912. So 1900 maybe? Yeah, we just, yeah, we said that a few minutes ago. Yeah, thanks for double checking that. <clears throat> Sounds like a good plan. push. So to translate that to viewers, that means we have about an hour and 10 minutes of bottom time roughly before we have to ascend. Thanks for, <clears throat> thanks for clarifying that. Hope we see some more cool stuff before we ascend. Just backing up a little bit, everybody, um, so we can get back to that uh, sea star that we'd like to sample. All right. Get the sample? We're going to sample we back up to get the sample. Back up. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant like during dinner or something. Oh, no, no, no. No, we, we had to wait for the ship to get back in place. Okay. And we have a comment in the checks box saying hi, totally new here. We need Welcome. Another 20 meters. Um, and they just were wondering how are the RVs uh, picked up after the dive Maybe is done? Reach it now, but is anyone able to kind of offer a little step by step, a brief step by step if you're not too busy? We'll go through that whole process at eight. Or I guess you'll see that whole process in like an hour if you stick around. <laughs> and you're, uh, you're asking about the recovery a, process? Yeah, A-frame and crane is the short answer. Uh, yes, the cranes. Yeah, yeah a little more detail. Um, so we sh we'll come up to the surface of the vehicles. Um, At Atalanta, we'll be closer to the stern of the ship and uh, Hercules will be um, further away, sort of a safe distance back. And then the uh, Atalanta sled gets kind of lifted up by the A-frame, slid onto the deck and secured. And then ROV Hercules is um, essentially piloted kind of around the, the port stern of the ship and picked up by a crane on the port side and put onto deck. Awesome, thanks for that explanation. Sure. There's currently a line that goes from Atalanta down the tether to Herc, and when we recover Atalanta, is, we yep. take that line yes. off and then transfer it over to the crane to pull it in. Sometimes you'll hear us refer to the recovery line or the knot that we use to uh, tie it either the Jacob's Ladder or the Daisy Chain. Oh, look at that. Right. Good. Good job relocating the Sea Star. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know how y'all kept track of that. Yeah, really yeah. good spatial awareness. <laughs> Leave a little breadcrumb trail. Yeah, <laughs> breadcrumb trail. Oh, oh. oh that's some Whoa. crumbly rock. How would we do that? that Roll weird. power. I think that was like Braille. already cracked. Oh, oh wow. look, there it goes. That was already like decaying, or it looked like there's some weird coloration on it. Yeah, it looked pretty altered, so I wouldn't be surprised if this broke apart like that. <laughs> I mean, if you want to sample now, rock no. pebbles. Nope, there. I don't want to sample something <laughs> that's destroyed. We could show you the inside. Uh, where is it going to go? This is forward. going in lambda forward, forward to left. Box. And it's going to eat that sponge. A uh, sponge is on the right. And a rock on the left, right? Yeah. Yeah, big of nodules on the left. But so there's, uh, there's clear plexiglass boxes for each. I have a question. How are we going to take the starfish out of Hercules? Like, how does that process work? Um, we just lift it out. You'll just pick it up? Yeah. Well, you, they have gloves on. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. We have gloves, and we put it into a tub, and we bring it into the lab. What? So sample 36. Has there been anything that 36, was... correct. Has there been anything that you were, like, scared to pick up before? No, but I've been pretty, so far, pretty not that scared. OK. Oh, this guy will be a little bit intimidating to pull up for me. I would kind of be so a little scared. So have you lowered your grip force a bit? I did. I lowered it to four. I would be a little scared to touch a coral. Mm -hmm. Buddy. Yeah, it's a big two feet. And once again, it's going in the tool tray. Yep. Tool tray coming out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, could somebody rack the uh, camera sled back as well? Thank you. Don't want to get poked in the eye. Ooh, you can really see the tomb feet on the yeah. on the bottom. Those little suction cups. There we go. Yeah, it's a really good job of taking them off the rock. Yeah, oh. sometimes you can I'm lose two feet in the pole, but maybe that the stabilizing rock full, may full. have caused it to hash a little. It a bit. Poked it. Not coming huh. off of there. Uh, you may just try scraping it into yeah. the box. A lateral motion. If it doesn't fit there, we also oh. have F. Uh, oh, the sponge is oh, going in, go in there. We can't go in there. Oh, we can't go in there. Yeah, no, the it's going to eat the thing. Yep. If it's too big for forward, we can put yeah. an E on the F on the oh side. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I think it may have uh, already yeah. succumbed. <laughs> All right, coming in. Oops. Coming yeah. in. Oh. He wants to float. I was trying to hold it there while you come in. I was probably going to do it for that box, though. I'm trying to get the leg under. Okay. All right. That was very 36. gentle. Good job, guys.
these must be dead, dead coral or sponges. I don't think that's rock. You don't have to stop. I was just making an observation. Sorry. Again, just looking at this cliff side slope. Crazy. You guys let me know when you want to move, please. Yep. Wow. Wow. This is so cool. Look at all of them. There's definitely a huge current that comes through here looking at the smooth surface of do, these rocks. Do we have a small, t do we have a quick chance to do a, a Niskin by chance? A Niskin? Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. This is a good community. I'm also curious what's up there on the left, but we'll do the Niskin first. Oh yeah. Is that a sponge? Yeah. Oh, is it a sponge? A, a, a big one? Yeah. I don't know. We're going to go look at it. Oh, white. Oh, Look how many of those. Which Niskin are you looking what for, Data? Um, there are several poles. Those crabs? Which Niskin are you looking for, Data? Oh, the squat lobsters. Um, oh, the Niskin squat lobsters. two or one? Two or one, I. Port room. Oh, we're doing the eDNA? Yes. Cool. So we have a question, um, Sebastian, maybe you can answer this. Um, do the live sample, samples handle the pressure change when they travel back to the surface? Um, most animals, um, unfortunately, do not survive the process, but mostly stay intact, except for um, siphonophores, due to their colonial nature and being very soft. Okay, mahalo, Sebastian. Um, there are some cases where they, they come up back alive. Um, for instance, my boss pulled up a fang tooth fish once. He thought it was dead. When he touched it, it bit him. Whoa. <laughs> Definitely a bite to remember. Just getting triggered. Just getting triggered. Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo. They look like poker balls. Not poker balls. Oh, my God. A lot of balls. Yes. Oh, my God. Those are actually... Oh. Um, Purpose uh, 3D printed, 3D printed objects. Yeah. 3D printer? Yeah. Whoa. Just to clarify, that was the skin two? That was two. the skin two. All right, perfect. Yeah, they look like the balls in pool. That you hit. You seem oh. to get better at not ripping them off. <laughs> well, the first few that were printed weren't 100% infill, so they weren't as strong. Uh, they were a little weaker, so we crushed a couple of them and pulled a couple of them off. When you guys can, can we just get a, a zoom on this guy? Just to see if he's alive or, or dead? That's where I was going next. Kind of remind oh, and look. Oh, that was horrible. Rat I'm sorry. Tail. Rat tail. It looks like honeycomb. It looks like, a, yeah, it's definitely a sponge. Very platey. It almost reminds me of plate fall. Do you think it's dead? Um, I am not sure. All right, go for zoom. It looks dead. It looks dead, but sponges are good at being still. Um, there's, there, it looks like there's something right there. Looks like there might be a small shrimp, maybe? Yeah. I see a brittle star on the right. Yeah, I see that. Um, I'm placing money on it's dead, maybe. Okay. But it's certainly quite the specimen, regardless. Yeah. How it grew that way. Almost like it was... Yeah, I was trying to figure out maybe it fell over. Yeah, okay. Possibility. 
Okay. All right. We're ready. Thank Probably you. Probably ready for that shit move yeah, now. Yeah, move up slope. Yep. <laughs> About 50 meters okay. towards waypoint 8. Yep. Sounds good. For Bridge those, nav. For those just joining us, we are on Expedition NA-154. Can we do a uh, ship move 50 meters at bearing 185 at 0 0.3 knots, please? Thank you. Expedition name is Ala Aumoana Kaiuli, the path of the deep sea travelers. Welcome on board with us. We're currently in Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument, the largest marine protected area under the U.S. flag at over 582,000 square miles of marine and terrestrial areas. Papahanao Mokuakea is considered an Aina Akua wow. by the Kanaka O'ili, or native people of Hawaii. Aina Akua meaning the place of where the deities and the ancestors reside and where we believe our spirits go after death into Po, the realm of the ancestors. Oh, what's that on the right? The white? You see it? Oh, oh, wow. Good eye. Whoa, it has a, looks like it has a Big sturdy one. stalk. Definitely a sponge. Mm -hmm. Do you folks remember the Hawaiian word for sponge? I wrote it down. Uh, no. It's hua quiz, pop quiz. Huakai. Huakai. Yeah. Polo lei. Good job. Uh, the squat lobster's like, I'm going to defend you off. <laughs> Crustacean. Is the word you just said, was that good job? Polole means correct. Correct. <laughs> Wait, so can you say the sponge again? Sorry. Huakai. Huakai. Can I get a quick zoom in? Huakai. Yeah, one second. It does look like the spot lobster wants to fight. Yeah. <laughs> He definitely wants to fight. They're like, get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a steal with the lasers on it. That's awesome. Whoa. 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 So intricate. I wonder if what we looked the dead thing that we looked at. It could be this. It? Look at yeah, the maybe. brown on yeah. top. It yeah. might be dying. So that might be the live version that we saw toppled over. Yeah. That makes very much sense. Must be pretty old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, can it? Can one branch of it die without it killing the whole thing, or if one goes, they all go? I think it's like it's if there's some kind of rotting, it's gonna spread at some point unless they can fight back. Um, I'm not sure on that one completely. I imagine taking pieces off is not gonna kill it because we do that with fragging for our samples, but. I don't think what's happening here is the same as that, necessarily, so I can't decidedly make a guess there. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Sebastian, maybe you can share, how can you determine age in regards to sponges or huapai? Um, similar to corals, it's based, usually based on size. Um, with sponges, a little bit more difficult. I imagine mostly you have to do some kind of carbon or uranium dating to get an accurate age on that. But size is a pretty good determination that it's old, but I'm not sure. It might depend on the species, how much old based on their size. Mahalo. Of course. So I was just looking and trying to find out uh, like what kind of organisms might eat a sponge this species. That's a good question. There's a lot of organs that eat sponges. Mm -hmm. There are nudibranchs, there are snails, there are Won't certain um, fish. sea stars do it as well? Sea stars as well. Yeah, sea urchins. I know we've seen the sea stars on like coral branches punching. Um, yeah. I know, I guess we've seen them on sponges too. I just didn't know if they would eat. I believe this is a primnoid coral. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful one. 
I know, it looks like a pretty fan. These squat lobsters crack me up. I love them. They're so funny. They always look like they're ready to square off. Yeah. So for our local Hawaii um, viewers, check out our Instagram um, page. We have, uh, we'll have a picture of a, uh, uh, a starfish that if you are familiar with the word kanaka tak, yeah, it's a, it's a, what happens to you after you eat a lot of food and you're just like really lazy. Check it out, it's pretty hilarious. We have a sea star that had a kanaka um, tak today. Behind the Christ of to the right, um, below the little ledge, can I get a zoom in on that? Sorry, what thing? On the right, below the ledge, you, you can see a little like on the right? gray area with a sponge behind it. Like a tan area. At the very bottom. What? What? Uh, uh, here, I'll mark it. I'll mark it. Right here? Yeah, yeah right there. Uh, this? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> There's many ledges and many chrysogorges. Many ledges, <laughs> many sponges. <laughs> many chrysogorges. Uh, so just for awareness, we just finished that ship move. All right. Okay. Do we want to call another 50 meter move in up to the... Uh, let's see what this... Sponge cliff ledges first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. That looks very familiar to one of our targets, so give me one sec. That, that's what yeah. I'm looking at. Okay. Um, that is one of our targets, if possible. Um, I understand this is a precarious spot for the EI sake. So we're going to try to. Do we have any slurps left? Um, let me double check. I'm pretty sure we do. Come on, Ed. I'm going to go over We've only got 45 minutes left. We got three so we flips. May as well fill. We, we have, have what? Three we have three flips. flips. Okay, let's so let's. Sample. If you guys can manage this. Oh, yeah. Grab and then slurp it or something, or however you want to do it. I think it looks then, pretty like it'll slurpable. Yeah, and Derek, once we finish this, we can start the ship moving again. Copy that. Can we have a uh, starboard camera off? Fuck. Pocket camera on, please. Thank you. So cool. We are going for slip five. Slip five. All right. Do we need uh, disregard? So is that moving? Or is that the current? It's moving? just the current, yeah, yeah, yeah. From our RV moving. <clears throat> uh, I'm just getting the craft okay. up. Craft's up. And we're gonna take slurp sample five. Five. Sweet. Just waiting on comms to the arm. Alright, standing by. Do you think that dead sponge being right in front of it hinders its ability to catch oh, food? It might, but also has a little le over ledge, so it might yeah. even make a little bit of a current, but I imagine just you know, being over overhang also lowers that current. So it might not be the most ideal spot. have to take a, a photo with the, the slurpee. Yeah, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why it's still up. Yeah, come in with you just a little bit, Jake. We're not going to get yeah. much. Mm. Still not there. Just about there. Roger. Just need oh, a better exposure. Huh. Huh. I don't know if I want to mess with that. Okay. <laughs> Good. And I'm going to engage suck. Maybe, maybe a little big. Who knows? We're going for an entire organism here. Oh, nope. yep. uh, a couple yeah. pieces. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and sample collected. It is. All right, number 38. Nice. And we'll switch off of that real quick. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Coming out. Sure. 
Should you check that off so we can, I don't know. Yeah. You have to confirm it first, right? I have the check off list oh, okay. here, but I'll put these two as check for now until we get a better and idea. I'm going to go to the next sample jar. All right. So, Sebastian, in the in future watches, if, uh, well, if we've so taken like multiple all got samples something at once, in them, I'm going to say that's uh, more we're risky to go away. you're done with stuff, just let us know and we can stand by. Should we all right. get there? Thank you. So, lifting off, heading up. Yeah, we're good. Gonna yeah, I think off. we can do the point three knot line again. All right. Uh, yeah, or are you, do, you per, do you prefer to do um, moves, step moves? It's up to you. Uh, are we doing anything particular at waypoint eight or just kind of going past it? I think we'll just go past it. I mean, yeah. basically we have less than an hour to get as far as we get, yeah. so I'd say let's just move. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, will do. Nice. Cover as much ground as we can. Okay. We've only got a couple of sample spots left anyway. Bridge, Nav. Water is murkier here. Visibility like is less. to track a line uh, bearing 185, 0.3 knots, please. Thank you. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That looks kind of similar to what we just took a sample of, but hmm. this is just all... want to stop instead yeah. of the other one. They seem to like those ledges. I think you're muted, Hannah. <laughs> Maybe they so go. they can like stick out and get, get their nutrients from the current. While their base is kind of protected inside. Oh, oh. Yeah. Nobody's home. Do you know what kind of sponge this is? I think I maybe oh. missed it from earlier. I think you're muted, Sebastian. It looks like a bolosoma <laughs> species of sponge. Bolosomas typically have a peduncle, which is what that little tube leading to the rock is. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty, pretty sponge. They like to filter feed. And hey, Tito in the front row, I got to throw another shout out to my sister Karen in St. Cloud, Florida. <laughs> Boy, I hope you heard this one. <laughs> Love you, sis. Hi, Karen. Hi. Hi. Where is St. Cloud, Florida? Uh, a little Ooh. near oh, Orlando. Oh, oh, okay. One. <laughs> He's just posing still. <laughs> wow. So cute. Wow. He's so cute. Look at them go. Now he's upside down. <laughs> I'm curious with the lights, do you think it's kind of like the deer in the headlights kind of syndrome? <laughs> right? Like yeah. underwater and these lights are coming on yeah. in the world. Uh, a Dan, little shocked. One of our ROV pilots would argue that we're using a wavelength that That's these kind of organisms bad. are not adept at seeing. But we also don't have any controls. We don't have any imagery of these without lights. So we don't really know. Kerplunk. So far, none of them have made a statement on the topic. But if they could talk, I wonder what yeah. they would say. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. It hung out with us for a while. Oh yeah, he was just stopping by.
That's similar to what we see in the Gulf of Mexico. I think they're called globe fish. Globe? Like globe. glow in the dark or globe? Globe. G-L-O-B-E. Oh, okay. Globe. Globe fish. Star. Sea star. Not two, three. Wow. Oh, look at that sponge. It's the way it's angled because of the crinoids. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if the crinoids caused them to... Possible. ...topple over like that. Mm. Oh, look, <laughs> This sponge kind of looks like the uh, creature from... Was it the deep? I think you might be muted. Yeah, the uh, the water that ends up yeah. getting the face. Yeah. Yeah. Are the shrimp shrimp? Are, are, oh, yeah. are they inside? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it. Just gotta get some focus though. here, and I'll come out. We'll take a look. I got it in the still cam. Oh, that's awesome. That is so intricate. Beautiful. That texture, I know it's a glass sponge, but that texture remind me, reminds me of Pillay's hair, mm. except golden. Sebastian, remind us, what is the shrimp that we're looking for? What color does it look like? Um, it's actually probably not shrimp, but we did get two in one sample. Well, oh, that's right, yeah. that's right, yeah. So we don't need to collect those guys anymore, hopefully. Weird urchin down there. Haven't seen that urchin. before. Urchin? Yeah, to the left of that sponge. Oh, I see it. We don't need to pick up any of these rocks, but they look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I need to say it. Mm -hmm. Another gorgeous sponge. So many. These are really cool shapes. This is very steep in here. Yeah. Um, Asako is saying that this one is probably a Walteria, just a bigger one, based on the last one. <laughs> they like coming over to say hi. I love their big eyes. So cute. It's funny how even the smallest organism up in the light bar casts a shadow like a kraken. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Down in front of you. Yeah. Check them out. I had to add some letters. So far, we only 
saw that one shark. Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> Why am I even here? <laughs> he gave us hope. It was weird. It was like, like 1,200 meters. The other ones we saw were like at 700. So I'm wondering if it's yeah. different. It was very dark. It looked colored. a lot darker, yeah. I wonder if it's another species of deep sea shark because it's just not used to seeing something yeah. like that. a weird hole in that rock. Maybe it's on the rock. A weird hole? A weird yeah. hole? Where? We just went out of frame bottom. <sighs> like a purple hole. We're approaching waypoint eight. This should be the summit, correct? This should be what? The summit of this little peak. Top? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're on a little like weird pinnacle in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it looks like a low bait club. That's a more uh, uh, scientific term. Yeah. Anemone. Well, there's only three options. So. <laughs> Pillow, low bait, and sheep. Sheep. I knew that. So yeah. So noticing a lot of. Remember, life along the steep slopes of these steep, like, steam mount inclines. Yeah. I've always thought that the, uh, the videos of the pillow basalts forming where it, like, cools and then more magma pushes out is just, like, one of the coolest things. Underwater, underwater video of lava flows. I know. And that's how lava tubes are formed, too, right? Or is that different? I'm thinking. Okay. I don't want to say yes and I don't want to say no. Okay, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. So just a heads up, but we've got about be... 30 minutes left in the dive on yep. bottom. Roger that. Roger. I think, um, just, yeah, keep, I don't think we want to go faster than this, but unless there's something really unique to, uh, stop and sample, I think we'll just keep moving and get as, as much coverage as we can, because who knows if anybody's ever going to dive at the end of this transect again, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like we, um, maybe around here, check if there's like an easy, accessible rock, because okay, this so, will be flat. Yeah, so she's pointing to this saddle that's coming up at the uh, bottom of the nav screen, like below Nautilus, uh, south, I guess it's south. Yep. Uh, the saddle that makes like that trapezoid flat spot below the seamount. Yep, we see it. Um, we'll stop. We'll we'll just keep an eye out if there's a rock to grab yeah. there. Yeah, and he's, and hopefully it'll be flat enough to where the ROV will, ROV will be able to do it quickly. Yeah, so we're we're gonna have a little bit of a downslope here before we reach that point. And yeah, we'll take a look around. Because we have we have one more space. Yes, for F, we do. Okay. So the rock could go into the what spot? Um, the starboard F. Starboard F. Oh, that's, cheap. that's a pretty anemone. It's really pretty. I love the color. Are we still going to be looking for an angular rock? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great memory, Tori. <laughs> and then that one little Shredessa shrimp is like, I'm the king of this mountain. Oh, that's really cool enough. Huh? This, this. Could zoom it? Oh. Coming in. Holding there. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, yeah, oh, that's a beautiful like red one. Right at the very peak. Do you know what kind of anemones this might be? Um, I'm not super familiar with deep sea anemones. Um, I know it's an anemone. It's definitely.